back to YouTube today. We got another video. James Cameron open the Oscars and making fun of Will Smith for showing out at last year's Oscars. So this is very funny because Will had just got on Chris Rock. You know, if y'all don't know, Chris Rock dropped. I'm assuming Netflix had to pay him millions of dollars for this. But they just dropped a video on, not a video, he did one of his comedy shows on Netflix and it was live and he actually replied to this and said, hey, Will, what Will replied was said it was inappropriate, in manner, irresponsible, unprofessional. He was disappointed with what Netflix did. No, I, first of all, let me say one thing to Mr. Will. Got respect for you, Will. Not a lot of respect, but some respect for you. But I'm going to give you some tough love, Mr. Will Smith. Some tough love, because this is something you got to hear. You smack this man in front of 7 billion people. Uh, and I don't even watch the Oscars. I watched the Oscars because I heard Will Smith smack somebody. I was like, what? And most people, and I saw the comments for the video too. It was funny. People were like, oh, he got privileged because he's rich. Because in, in any other scenario, if I walked up on stage and smacked somebody, I'm poor, I don't have money. They would take me to jail, but they won't take him to jail. It's because, and then a lot of people even said, and I read the other comments, I, I read the left and right comments, and, people, and, and the left comments were like, well, even if he went to jail, he would have got right back out because Chris Rock said he's not pressing charges. And then even if he did press charges, Will has money. His wife has money. I'm pretty sure he was going to get bailed out either way it go. <laughs> so, it's just like, well, jail is not an issue. Chris Rock should just put this but on stage, but respect for Chris Rock for keeping it professional. I got respect for you, Chris Rock. You, you, you a damn good man. You know not to fight in front of those white people. You, you damn right. That's how you do it. I, if that was me though, I would have waited till after the Oscars was over and then beat Will ass. <laughs> after the Oscar, not not when it's going on. I'm gonna keep it professional like Chris Rock. Whoop his ass after that. But yeah. But anyways, let's check this John on out so I can get a good chuckle and see what he's James uh, J Jim, Jimmy Cameron said Camille says. Welcome to the 95th Oscars. It is, we made it. You made it. Congratulations. I know that uh, being here tonight is a dream come true for most of the people in this it's room. Thank you for inviting me to be a part of it, especially this year when the world finally got out of the house to see the films you worked so hard to make the way you intended them to be seen in a theater. <laughs> and I, I also you want to say that, mask on. that I am happy to see that Nicole Kidman has finally been released from that abandoned AMC <laughs> where she has been held captive for almost two full years now. It's good to have you back, Nicole. And thank you for encouraging people who were already at the movie theater to go to the movie theater. <laughs> you look great. Everybody looks so great. When I look around this room, I can't help but wonder, is Ozempic right for me? <laughs> we have so many first-time nominees here. In the acting categories alone, there are 16 first-time nominees, including <laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis, <laughs> including Anna de Armas, Colin Farrell, Michelle Yeoh, Brendan Fraser. There's a lot of people here from what I heard. Keith Lee Kwan. Is that Scarlett Johansson in the back? Yeah, that looks like Scarlett Johansson. This is, I think, a great piece of Oscar trivia. 31 years ago, in 1992, Brendan Fraser and Keith Lee Kwan were in a movie together. Remember which movie it was? Encino Man. Two actors from Encino Man are nominated for Oscars. Okay. Geico has been offering savings for over Jackie 85 Chan, years. That's longer than a buffer. Was that Jackie Chan? We'll have to see how this. Uh, I, I, also, guys, I found out my, somebody told me I could actually download the video. They have it in high resolution. 
That's what an Mike incredible did night this must be for the two of you, and what a very difficult night for Pauly Shore. <laughs> Maybe it's time to reboot Biodome. Why not? All the top ten highest grossing films this year were sequels or franchises. They say Hollywood is running out of new ideas. I mean, poor Steven Spielberg had to make a movie about Steven Spielberg. <laughs> Congratulations, Steven. Look at this, by the way. I want to say, right here, this is my favorite duo of the year, Steven Spielberg and Seth Rogen. What oh, a pair. Two people from Ant-Man. Oh, the what's Joe and Hunter Biden of Hollywood. From Ant-Man and Wallace. The quantum line. Seth, what are you on right now? Be honest. Nothing? Mushrooms, right? Did you give one to Steven? Give him one. Let's see what happens. Maybe he'll make something crazy. Steven claims he's never even smoked weed, which I find hard to believe. You mean to tell me you were sober when you made a movie about an alien who eats Reese's Pieces all day and <laughs> can't remember how to phone home? You were high as a bike when you made that movie. <laughs> Steven is the first director to be nominated in six different decades for an Oscar. It's remarkable. This time, Number of rich as you know, he is nominated for the Million Fables, Dollar Actors, which is by far his most this personal is film. They say, write what you, <laughs> you know. You know what's funny? And they say, also, write what you know your mom did with your dad's best friend. And Steven did that, and the result was yet another Oscar nomination for the great Michelle Williams, who is um, right there, Michelle. And The Fablemans wasn't an easy shoot for Michelle. After almost every take, Spielberg would rush up to her with tears in his eyes, and he'd scream, that's not how mommy said it. <laughs> I also want to extend congratulations to Steven's longtime collaborator, the maestro John Williams, who is now the oldest <laughs> to break even. All of Nick Cannon's kids had to see Avatar four times. Uh, and they did, I guess. James I'm Cameron is not here, uh, by the way, tonight. You know, you know a show is too long when even James Cameron can't sit through it. <laughs> Some of the cynics are saying Jim Cameron isn't here because he didn't get a Best Director nomination. And uh, while I find that very hard to believe about a man of such deep humility, he does have a point. I mean, how does the Academy not nominate the guy who directed Avatar? What do they think he is, a woman? <laughs> Five Irish actors are nominated tonight, which means the odds of another fight on stage just went way up. <laughs> And while we're on the subject of diversity, I want to say, especially those of you watching at home, there are a number of excellent films and performances that were not nominated tonight, including Till and The Woman King, which are both based on true stories with great performances from Danielle Deadweiler and Viola Davis that are very worthy of your time if you haven't seen them, as is a small independent film called Top Gun Maverick, the movie that saved the movies. Everyone loved Top Gun. Everybody. I mean... It was actually a good movie. Tom I had to watch Cruise it again. with his shirt off and that beach football scene. L. Ron Hubba Hubba. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, Tom and James Cameron didn't show up tonight. The two guys who insisted we go to the theater didn't come to the theater. <laughs> so if you're hoping to get a look at Tom Cruise, he's not here. Or, or maybe he is here. Maybe. That's Tom Cruise right there, wearing a Judd Hirsch Mission Impossible mask. <laughs> There's only one way to find out for sure. Judd, we're gonna need you to drive a motorcycle off. Last month you performed at the Super Bowl, and tonight Rihanna will be performing at our halftime in just about four and a half hours from now. What is the worst Rihanna has part? a nine-month-old backstage, and he's very cute. He pooped during rehearsal. There he is, Austin Butler. Austin. As you know, as a first-time nominee, and Tom, which just goes to show you how this is a special night, Phil, you will be awarded the Oscar for Best Actor. <laughs> for oh, this is right want here. me to feel safe. So we have strict policies in place. If anyone in this theater commits an act of violence at any point during the show, you will be awarded the Oscar for Best Actor. <laughs> and permitted to give a 19-minute long speech. <laughs> no, but seriously, the Academy has a crisis team in place. If anything unpredictable or violent happens during the ceremony, just do what you did last year. 
Nothing. <laughs> Sit there and do absolutely nothing. Maybe even give the assailant a hug. And if any of you get mad at a joke and decide you want to come up here and get jiggy with it, <laughs> it's not going to be easy. There are a few of my friends you're going to have to get through first. You're going to get, have to get through the heavyweight champ, Adonis Creed, before you get to me. You're going to have to do battle with Michelle Yeoh before you get to me. You are going to have to beat the Mandalorian before you get to me. You are going to have to tangle with Spider-Man. You are going to have to... Nah. You are going to have to tangle with Fable Man. <laughs> and then you're going to have to go through my right-hand man, Guillermo, if you want to get up to this stage. Oh, wait a minute. No. <laughs> Hold on, I should say. The other Guillermo, not, not, that, not Del Toro. The, yes, that one. Okay, there you go. I know he's cute, but make no mistake, you even so much as wave at me, that sweet little man will beat the Lydia Tar out of you, okay? <laughs> there will be no nonsense tonight. We have no time for shenanigans. This is a celebration of everyone here. You told us you wanted all the categories back in, and we listened. They're all back in. <laughs> That's right. We will be showing all 23 categories live tonight, except for one. Earlier tonight, Best Picture went to All Quiet on the Western Front. <laughs> Congratulations to Germany. We put all the categories back in because the movie community wanted it. Almost as much as the television community didn't want it. So, no complaining about how long the show is. I saw all your own movies. Now it's my turn to make you sit in the theater for three and a half hours. Well, there you go, guys. Uh, he was cracking, obviously he was cracking jokes about Will Smith and Chris Rock, what they did last year, and how everybody just sat there and watched Will Smith walk up on stage and smack him, and they all just sat there and watched. And that's probably gonna be the thumbnail of Spider-Man, of his face, his face made that hilarious. That was actually funny. <laughs> he just like, hey, I throw these hands down just because I look like I'm innocent, don't mean I can't fight. But, uh, yeah, man, that was, I, I, I don't know, Will, man. Everybody's taking a shot at you here. Because it's, Will just don't know he put himself in a hole again. It's, it's all the stuff that he tried to get rid of it's coming right back. There you go. Should have never did it, man. You should have just let it go. But anyways, make sure y'all like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. And let me know if you guys enjoyed my reaction to this. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Check, let's check this gun on out, y'all. Yeah.